Prime factorization always will work. Always rewrite the number as a product of its primes. For square root, you take out the, you know, the pairs of numbers. For cube root, you take out the pairs of threes. However, there is also that other way that we mentioned was by rewriting a number in terms of its square, in terms of the square number that divides into it. Do you guys remember doing that? Yes. All right, so we can do that same thing for cube roots. And I think actually doing it that method for cube roots is much easier because there's only, only so many numbers available for the cube roots that you will probably be um, presented with. For instance, 2 cubed is equal to 8. 3 cubed is equal to 27. 4 cubed is equal to 64. 5 cubed is equal to 125. So can we rewrite 250 as a multiple of one of these numbers? Yeah, it's 125, right? So I could say the cube root of 125 times 2. Now, do we know what the cube root of 125 is? Yeah, it's 5, right? So therefore, I can just rewrite 5 times the cube root of 2. So for square root, sometimes it's difficult because there's so many square roots, right? You have 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. Like, sometimes it's a lot of numbers. But for here, if you guys can just look to see if you're taking a cube root, is it a multiple of like one of these four numbers? Obviously, if it's a really large number, you'd probably want to go into looking at 6 cubed um, and 7 cubed and higher. But more than likely, more of the problems that you're going to look at will be divisible by one of these numbers. And then you can just simplify it the other way. So you don't even have to do prime factorization. Isn't that amazing, Tiffany?